Show me your hands. You are? You can tell a lot about a man from his hands. So, yes. These are the hands of a working man. Four set of fingers and all. Not everybody can say that. Do you know, I think I find what I've been looking for all these years. Pardon? My hero. Steady on, I say, steady on. A man whom women love and men admire. Beating heart of his community. The essence of working class masculinity. A man of quiet steel who, with the climax of my great novel, as the coal shaft creaks and cracks and starts to collapse, puts his massive shoulder against the black rock and becomes a human pit prop holding up the crust of the earth whilst his fellow colliers escape to safety. Does he get out alive? I'm afraid not. But in death he becomes immortal. And... You know, I've, I've been looking for a name for my hero, my underground atlas, and now I think I've found it. Fred Elliot. My name in a book? Oh, yes, if I may. My name. Immortalized as the hero of a great novel. Fred Elliot, a giant among men. Oh, let me get you a drink. A pint, is it? Oh, no, thank you. Uh, I prefer a brandy. Large brandy coming up. It's a steady on now. We, we, we've got the meeting later. Well, indeed, but if I'm going to read tonight, my creativity requires oiling. Yes, well, well, don't, well, don't you think it's oiled enough for now? You know, tonight, I'm going to give you a recital you'll never forget. I think my patrons deserve nothing less than my chef d'oeuvre. Oeuvre? Oh, oh that, that's an egg, isn't it? Uh, not quite, no, it's, no. In this case, it's a bird. The canary's last song. Ah. Yes, indeed, gentlemen. This evening, I'm going to shovel fresh hot right into your ears, and if that doesn't deserve a drink... Will my character be in it? Uh, yeah, um, yes, perhaps, but, I, you know, I'm torn between... A variety of extracts. Uh, a little libation might uh, help clarify my decision. Oh, you mustn't go out there now. Norris, there's a gunman at large. Uh, I've informed me police contacts. Just, just give it five minutes for the coast to clear and you... What? What, what have you got all your bags together for? Now, please don't make this any more difficult for me than it is. Yeah, you're not leaving. You and Mrs. Bishop have been extremely kind. But, but you don't need to go. I, I've, I've spoken to Audrey. But it is, it is for her that I do this, as much as for myself. I cannot allow her to be drawn moth-like to the flame of ruined promise. But you don't understand. I'm bringing you fresh but hope. Please, would you just let me drift away? Much as Eskimos lash themselves to the icebergs, when they become a burden to those around them. But that's it. You're not a burden. Norris, if I can achieve nothing, please let me beat an honourable retreat. But I think I can get the members of the book group to club together and raise enough money to get your book published. Really? Yes. You'll be back on the shelves where you belong. <laughs> but, but excuse me now, because I, I must go and inform members of the watch. Truly a gentleman and a scholar, Norris. <laughs> oh, Norris, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Right. <laughs> I don't think we should disturb him. Norris, how is he going to know I'm here? This is a man clearly in the throes of a creative passion. If we just go barging in... Oh. He stopped. Well, um, unless he's just marshalling his thoughts. Who? Where am I? Oh, it's sometimes like this. Oh, well, of course, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> you are. And it's now. It is. <laughs> And it's Audrey, isn't it? Oh, I'm so sorry, dear lady. I have uh, been elsewhere. 
and take a little time to return. Oh, well, you must do. They'll be all right now. We're having lunch, are we not? <laughs> well, you did say, Mal. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> right, uh, Norris, yeah. uh, get me some paper, will you? Oh, yes, yes, yes of course. Yes. <laughs> so, so there you go. Uh, want you to tell me all about yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we have another brandy? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, come on, I've got work to do. Oh. Yeah, you can have one, though. One large brandy. Oh, and then could I have the bill, please? Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, it's come to me now. What has? How I can repay your kindness. Oh. What was the name of your late husband? Alf. Oh. Well, I've got to put him in the book. Oh. He should be my hero. Oh, no. well, he used to be mine. Well, uh, anyway, if, if not the hero, he'll, he'll be a supporting character who displays courage and fortitude. Oh. Now, what uh, manner of man was he? <laughs> what was his profession? He was a grocer. Grocer? Well, a poetic license may be called for, but he will be in there. You have my word. Oh. Have you ever been married, Mel? To my muse. Oh. And to one or two ladies as well. <laughs> but the creative urge finds that the bonds of marriage constrain, and sooner or later, something has got to give. Oh. I can tell you, Audrey. The life of a writer is one of solitude and self-denial. Oh. Uh, are you? Do you have such a thing as a cigar? What on earth are you doing, Emily? Oh, I'm just looking for something. Oh, what? Well, uh, little porcelain figurine I always keep on the mantelpiece. Ah, uh, I'm afraid I have a confession to make. Ooh. What? Uh, having destroyed my day's work, I came in here earlier in somewhat of a temper. And, um... And? And, uh, I'm afraid I rather carelessly smashed the figurine, uh, waving my arms about. Oh! Did you, did you keep the bits? Uh, no, no, they were sharp, no. I was worried someone might cut themselves. That's a shame. I hope it was of no great sentimental value. No, although it was of considerable value in monetary terms. Was it? Oh, yes. It was worth at least £200. It was not. Was it? How much? Uh, it was very collectible, is that? Oh, well, I can only say how deeply sorry I am and to give you my word of honour that I will replace or refund you before my departure, and uh, I say to you again, Emily, I am deeply, deeply sorry. He's very volatile, isn't he?